several computers now have primary control of critical vehicle functions.
And now, traffic and weather. No, actually. Testing. One, two. Check, check, check. Am I on the internet? Weber Nets Ahoy. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Where am I? There I am. Let's turn this timer off before it starts beeping. But yeah, how are y'all doing? How's it going? Let me move. I have way too much stuff on my screen today. <laughs> how are y'all doing? Hello from Colombia. Welcome, welcome. And I did, uh, sorry, I, I'm making sure my phone is off. I did find out. There he is. We, we got my, the lawnmower has arrived right now, right on time. My, my lawnmower man. All right, where is, let's turn, all right, we're good. I'm a professional streamer. How, how are y'all? <laughs> Can't you tell? Oh, you know what? I left my water in the other room. I'll be right back. Oh, Chris, you have recovering from COVID. Sorry to hear that, man. Hope you get to feeling better. All right. I'll wait a few more minutes. Was it 10 o'clock? Yeah, it was 10 o'clock now. I wasn't as early as I thought I was. How's everybody doing? Everybody good? All right, so... I don't know. Is there anybody here that doesn't know what Mid Journey is? And just like, what is he talking about? Um, excuse me. How can we give prompts? No, nah, yeah, we're not going. We're not ready for that quite yet. Maybe we'll do that a little bit later. Uh, the first thing I want to do is explain what on earth we're looking at. <laughs> so. Uh, but welcome everybody. My name is Kurt. You probably know that. Uh, I'm a comic book colorist, an artist, and uh, and uh, addicted to this app <laughs> at the moment. So, if you're under a rock or you're just uh, or aren't aware, uh, this software called Mid Journey it, it is an AI learning machine learning art machine. Uh, I don't know. That's probably the best definition <laughs> that I have for it. Uh, it takes, and this is, I know a lot of you guys know what this is, but in case any of my regular people that just have no idea what's going on. Um, but you, it's it, it runs on a Discord bot, which I've found to be very, an interesting <laughs> choice. But um, you literally type what you want it to give you. And it, uh, it does its best to uh, to give that to you. And now mo I will say, a lot of the images that I have picked for this today are, uh, you know, they've been through a few generations. It's not completely random. Uh, some of these probably are, but the vast majority of these, uh, every time you run a prompt, it gives you four options to choose from. Um, you can then take one of those four and get it to run a variation on one of those four. And so you're able to sort of, to an extent, kind of uh, dial in what you're looking for. And I say to an extent because I, I'm still, uh, we're all, I guess, beginners with this, but there are very advanced users using this, lots of prompts and codes and things that I'm not even aware of yet uh, that, I'm, that I'm trying to figure out. I'm still convinced it's reaching into other dimensions. 
It, it might be. It, it, it might be. <laughs> um, the, uh, but I, I've got to tell you, the, the day that I signed up was probably three, four, three, four days ago, four or five days ago now. And I, I've, I've played with it a lot. I've, pl I've, I've generated hundreds and hundreds of images with it, trying to figure out how in the hell that it's, it's, it's doing this, number one. But I also sort of, it's, uh, wanted to see how it's doing its color theory and just art decisions in general, because the thing is, it makes interesting decisions. Like, it makes creative decisions. And we'll probably at some point in this stream get into, you know, the the philosophy, the ethics, whatever you want to call it, of of, of what this thing is. The fact that it's so young and still I'm just going to randomly like show y'all stuff as I'm talking but the fact that it's so incredibly new and is this good you know should artists be scary uh, you know <laughs> about this and the answer I think is no not yet but yes eventually which I think means yes, <laughs> but I but I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, I don't know. Uh, it's it's been uh, I I am hard to impress <laughs> when it comes to like art and software in general, um, and I don't think I've ever been as stunned as 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 I am over what over what it's doing. Um, me too it's it's too realistic if you want it to be if you want it to be really unrealistic it'll do that too um but anyway the first thing i thought we would do is sort of um uh what do you call it um we'll look through some of these and just sort of ooh and ah and, and then we'll we'll talk about uh and there's my lawnmower guy sorry he'll he won't be here long he has a big lawnmower <laughs> Is there a way to merge all of this into one? Maybe not. I'm just gonna do this since we're here. So <laughs> it, it doesn't always it doesn't always uh, hit up uh, hit it out of the park here. Uh, but I wanted to show you kind of the range that it has and, and a little bit, and then we'll uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll look into some of the details on this. But uh, I'm gonna start. Boy, I have a lot of I have a lot of images in here. I've got about 50 pictures in here. Um, so to start with, uh, and I'll, I'll try to remember the prompts I, uh, on most of these, I can look them up if we really need them, but, um, and again, I'm really sorry about the lawnmower. Um, whenever you are, uh, setting up what they call a prompt, which is basically just a command that you're sending this thing, uh, you can give it as little or as much information as you want, you know? So if you give it, uh, like I did one yesterday, uh, just I've been goofing around doing a lot of silly stuff just to see what it would do um, and so for example you know if you put in Harry Potter and Master Chief uh, and just leave it at that <laughs> it, it might give you something like this now uh, that's not perfect Master Chief has put on a few pounds or, or he's merged with a tank. I, I, I don't, I don't really know, but, um, but what it gives you isn't bad as a, you know, if you were putting together a sketch, if you're trying to riff on compositions and like, especially for things like, you know, for covers or, or advertisements or whatever, I think this is where it's really going to be a useful thing for a lot of artists and art directors and things like that that are out there saying, hey, can you give me four variations on this idea? Well, being able to take that into mid-journey and generate, you know, 50 options within a few minutes, it really could help a lot of artists narrow down, like, well, I like this, I like that, I don't like that, or it might just inspire you to do something you didn't think of at all. I think right now there's going to be a lot of it being used like that. 
Um, I've also, you know, little illustrations for magazine articles and things like that. Like, I, there, it, it does, it does really good. This was a, uh, a sad man in a doctor's office, watercolor, blue and white, stark. What else did I put in there? I think that was about it. And again, it doesn't look like a person like in the face it looks very odd actually it looks like the face has been like condensed to, to right here uh, so again this isn't always going to hit out of the park but it does look like a watercolor drawing you know um are you guys not seeing what are you guys not are you guys why is it not updating that's interesting hold on one second mm, da, 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 da. so you didn't see the master chief thing either okay well, hold on let me, uh, that's weird. Let's, properties. There it goes. Is it live now? It's like it wasn't live. Okay, now it's live. Never had that happen with OBS. Okay, we're still seeing Harry Dresden. Yeah, that that one we'll get to in a second. That I put detective. I put, like, lonely detective in an alleyway or something. Like, <laughs> that's what it gave me. Um... But anyway, this is this was the Master Chief I was talking about. But um, Thickster Chief, yeah, that's right. Uh, but anyway, let's see what else it does. We got the watercolor thing I was telling you about. Um, again, like it's a nice composition. It is. It. I will say that it doesn't really miss with comp with like compositions very often. <laughs> like I mean, yeah, every now and then it'll throw out something really strange. But, you know, it gives, it knows, it obviously knows, you know, the rule of thirds and it knows, you know, golden ratios and it knows this thing has been nothing but fed images from the internet and it knows what people find interesting and impressive and, you know, eyeball magnetism, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Like it's, it is a weaponized color theory machine okay or art theory machine i guess we could say but anyway there's another example of that but what's interesting to me is that like it doesn't just look like you know watercolorish but it's also got like a papery texture on there that like you wouldn't it wouldn't have in some of the other stuff so it extra it does extrapolate and make decisions that you don't necessarily have to give it and so there's absolutely a randomness to it but um but again, it's a strong, uh, even I, I would say like emotional. <laughs> I mean, this guy does look sad, right? Like, so I don't know. Like I've, I, I, I realize people have very strong opinions about this software too. So, you know, we'll, like I said, we'll get into the, the specifics of, uh, well, we'll get in that discussion a little bit later. Um, this was, uh, you know, a totally different style. I think this was, I put in the style of Guillermo del Toro, which it probably doesn't know who that is. But if it looks up his work, uh, er, er, you know, I, I did put red and green in here. Uh, that was that was in the prompt. And I know he likes red and green. But um, I missed the first few minutes how these images created. That's the point. It's magic. You put you type it in a line and it doesn't gives you this stuff we'll, we'll play with some actual prompts in a second like maybe if, if we were given a, a cover prompt or something and try to you know come up with that but uh but it does a few things i've noticed uh very very consistently and if you're a viewer of this channel if you've watched my caveman color theory series at all uh, you will find this uh a review i would say almost uh because this is like again this is weaponized caveman color theory um it likes to it very often will uh make sure that for example if the foreground is dark like like in this case this character is uh very very uh dark on the screen uh it's great at generating images that look too detailed but they aren't uh or are wrong stuff looks good at arm's length uh sure it's not creating finished artwork 
on the first few passes that you're doing but it can <laughs> okay um just uh, again uh let me see if i can I, I just went into the community feed page which i think you have to remember to have access to and this is like the second thing like sure you could say they're detailed at arm's length and look good but a lot of them also look good up close <laughs> especially after a few generations um you know uh every time you run a variation you know it keeps something from your previous you know um uh, your previous iteration as, as much as you want there's actually like a weight you can give it um but but that's true a lot that's true a lot especially in the early iterations it will definitely look rough around the edges but it doesn't always look rough around the edges. Um, but, but like I said, with this one, we got a very dark foreground. It's got all this red, whatever this is. I think this is like a dark mystical siren. I mean, this siren wouldn't convince me to come after her, but maybe you're into this. Um, but you'll notice that little splash of white right, right behind the focal point. That light, or not white, but that light color. Um, it very consistently creates that, you know, what, you know, what I just, the, the negative space around the character. Like, we'll, as we go through these, I want you guys to sort of pay attention to, to this in particular, is I want you to notice just how simple that it makes the area immediately around your focal point. Uh, this is this is a very basic art concept but if if you're wanting something to come forward the simpler that that the area around it is the easier that's going to be you know if if this piece was like modeled with a bunch of like other stuff in the background well one you're you're breaking down that difference between the foreground and background like it's all a little bit darker and so uh, it very consistently will throw a sort of a light, simpler area right behind your focal point almost every single time. Um, but you will also notice that it doesn't, like, it, it doesn't, like, it frames things well. Like, all of these colors are all very, you know, on the dark end of the spectrum. Like, if we, if we look at this in black and white, you can really see, like, it just it flies at you i mean it's really really strong use of values um let's see what else and if any of you guys have questions about any of these particular ones just let me know and again sorry about the lawnmower he'll, he'll be done in a second uh this is another uh derivative uh from that one it got a little bit more detailed uh very uh swamp thingish <laughs> and, and and some of this stuff you will notice a lot of these things are sort of on the dark side and they're just more fun to make to me. Uh, the software is really good at faking detail and stuff like this, because again, like looking at this from here, it's like, man, this is pretty amazing. And even if you get close and this is not very high res, but the, there's, there's enough there that you're reading more detail into what it's actually making. But even on this one, We've got that little light splash almost pointing at the, uh, you know, pointing at the focal point right here. Um, it's framed with lighter stuff down here. Uh, you know, the background is very, very simple. Red block, slightly darker red block, you know. Um, it does limited palettes really, really well. Um, yeah, that's what I was trying to say about the detail. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But uh, let's see what else we have. This is a tall one. This was, uh, I think this was again, like my Lonely Man in the Street series <laughs> I did there for a little while. Um, it does. I put this in here because it does weird stuff. It, it will throw in really strange things. Like, I don't know, it looks like it tried to put a man up there. I, I'm not 100% sure about that. But it's very good at clouds. Uh, these examples have all been very moody. Does it have fantastical and happy stuff as well? Or is it mostly training on moody images? 
it, it's this might be more about my uh what i'm looking for currently um like this for example is on the top of the community page at the moment um it it, it knows I'll, I'll grab a few of these just uh, to let you know that it, it'll it'll do what you want it to do i mean if you want it dark and moody you put that in there i mean i literally add things like foreboding and uh you know uh terrifying or whatever like you put that stuff in there it's 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 going to take it into account and uh i was trying to see but i i think it's just the dark stuff that it does is more interesting a lot of times i think than the beautiful gorgeous stuff that it does but it does both very well um but no they're definitely not they're not all horror horror movie images uh but but it's uh it's good the asymmetry is so realistic on the face yeah yeah uh, i think I mean, literally the prompt on that one just and, and I, you know what i'm gonna bring this can i show yeah I'm, I'm gonna bring this over just to show you how much work went into creating this because i think this is something that's poorly understood but you'll notice like it's doing like a soft focus effect you know like her hair is actually you know out of focus along the edges um the prompt for this one the most beautiful woman in the world uh in the style of julia uh Razum razumova i don't know who that is beautiful happy expression cheery uh so some of these prompts like unreal engine octane rendering i see this a lot when people want a lot of very specific detail um because if you don't add you know you'll see like uh i mean even trending on art station is a prompt that you see often and they haven't like dumped all of their info and what this how this software works so does that mean that it's going to trending on art stations page every day and seeing what's there because it, it might be that's what i did <laughs> this thing works like i do if i wanted to get him get impressed good art station but um, anyway, I wanted to show you sort of the how this came about. So if you're a member, you have access to this gallery. So this is the parent image for that. And, uh, and I also wonder, I got to say, the software is a little bit racist. Maybe a lot racist. <laughs> I don't mean this. I really don't mean this to joke about it. But if you ask it to give you like a picture of a little boy or a little girl like 99 times out of 100 they're going to be white they're going to be caucasian unless you say otherwise now if you say you know african american black uh asian whatever you know it uh it'll give you that but by default <laughs> it sure likes white people quite a bit apparently um so yeah for what it's worth but you can see like going back through these are some of the related images to this one uh, you know so who knows like how it looks like it went through multiple multiple generations to get to that point uh this is a big issue in machine learning right now the racial bias yeah it's definitely a thing definitely a thing but anyway i guess my point is it will do pretty things if you <laughs> if you want it to uh, let's see what else do we have we talked about that one we talked about that one uh, but on this one, the other thing I've noticed that it does very consistently is the the frame, like immediately around whatever it is that you want to see, it very often frames it perfectly. You know, it's like even in this case, we got the wall on this side and we've got the split between the white and yellow on this side. So you end up with it, it, that that's an easy way to get an image to really to get a focal point to really come out is to frame it uh, the way i i guess you could think about it is the rule of thirds so like if your subject is this big think about about that much space on both sides of it you know and that's about how much space it creates you know and obviously on something like this you know the top half is more important than the bottom half <laughs> 
Yeah, I, we won't get into the. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on on the, the the racial bias at the moment, but it's a thing. And, uh, but yeah, we'll we don't need a we don't need a debate on on that in the chat. That will that's all we'll have in the chat today. If that's what we have, they can fix the bias if they want. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be working on it. Uh, here's some others that. Um, Again, very in the similar series, and I was running through images. Uh, I think I gave it. Uh, I also had it to add yellow and red uh, in the uh, yellow, red, and black. I think is what I put in the image. And again, like you get that like really nice space on both sides, very clean right around it, and then all the rest of your stuff. Uh, you know, it just is perfectly framed, and all and like the, the the compositions it creates. I guess is what for me has been most impressive. It's like, it knows, for example, like what edges should be hard and which edges should be soft. You know, if, if we mark all of the really sharp lines on this, I mean, they're really only here and like here and over here, but all of this stuff is just pointing directly at our focal point. And in the areas where that edge is not as important, like there, it's almost a lost edge. You know, we, we've got the, the sky is running right into the building, basically. And hey, Keeper, how's it going? The yellow and red. Yeah, like I did a whole bunch of, I really tried to trip it up. Like, I wonder, we can do this in real time real quick. Let me see if I can find... Uh, let me go to my, whoops, I can't type. Let me go to my gallery here. Anything that you've done in the past, you can bring back into the app. Um, so if I find that in Discord, so I'm going to take this exact image and I'm going to grab it. And I'll, and I'll give you guys the, the prompt that I'm putting in here too. So this one, so first is the URL for this image. And then it says a lonely detective stands in a deserted alley. The buildings are brutalist, um, in the style of a horror movie, golden rule, golden rule, golden ratio composition, black, yellow, white, cinematic, intense, emotional, at an aspect ratio of 11 by 17. That's what it gave me. So. I'm going to change, let's, let's completely try to change the tone on this. So instead, uh, somebody give me a, a, what's like, what would be a color scheme you find hard to work with? Somebody give me an idea and throw out, like, give me three colors and they could be any, any colors. I'm also going to get rid of the line, uh, that it's from a horror movie just to uh, see what that does. If I can find my place on my keyboard. Whoops. Whoops, I accidentally ran that one. Uh, so we'll get something else here in a second. <laughs> I'll see what it does. I didn't even finish it. But uh, let's see that. Green, purple, yellow. Red, green, purple. Purples and greens are tough to nail. Uh, there's a couple people saying purple and green. They're uh, they're almost complementary though. Those are. I'm gonna say that's gonna be pretty simple, but but they are tough to work with. So let's say uh, primary. Let's say green, purple, yellow. Very uh, Mardi Gras. Whoops. And 11 by 17. All right, so what I accidentally sent it a second ago doesn't have a color scheme. So it gave us this color scheme. So that's the one that I just ran. And these are low res at this size. You get close and these aren't really that great. But again, you can see that sort of formula happening <laughs> where you've got your frame 
you've got the area right around the character that is simpler than everywhere else on the image. Um, and they're all pretty good compositions. <laughs> uh, should we be seeing what you're doing? You should just be seeing what's on my screen. You'd like to see the interface. Okay. Well, hold on. I, 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 so let me see. Give me a, give me a second here. Give me a second. I, I'm going to have to, I don't want to share the list of everyone's names that I have DMs with on the internet. So, all right. You guys are going to just see me for a second. Sorry big big head warning there we go my room looks pretty clean right now all right so let me put this in studio mode and oh yeah that's working all right so give me one second here what is on that anything no discord Okay, and then we'll reset the transform and then bring that over there and over there and over there. I think that should be good. All right. And let's see, this should, I don't know why this isn't updating. I've never had o o OBS do this ever <laughs> where it's just, it doesn't update client area, capture cursor. Let me try that. All of that stuff. It's like OBS is just completely frozen where where it is right now. I'll just I'll take a screenshot and and show you uh, because I don't really have a I don't I I can't explain what's going on with uh, like there there isn't an interface really other than it's just Discord. Um. But I don't want people to be confused forever about this. So this is just a screenshot. Uh, this, I copied this image from the previous image. I put in all this stuff. Uh, these buttons pop up below the image. Uh, this will upscale number one, upscale number two, upscale number four. The V line will give you variance on number one or number three or number four, whatever. And then this will just rerun them, uh, rerun, reroll as they call it. So you literally just type in Discord. There, there's there's no interface other than that, at least right now, which is an interesting choice, <laughs> to, to say the least. But, um, oh, and there's our purple. Uh, now, it's heavily, it looks like it's kind of influenced by that other image on this, actually. So tell you what, let me not put in the other image because that, that it didn't pull in that color scheme because it was looking at the other image and trying to extrapolate from that. So I'm going to run it without giving it the previous image and just have it rerun. Green, purple, yellow. Yeah, okay. That should be good. This will just take a second. If... Uh... Let's see. It's running. We can get rid of this for now. Forty percent. It also gives you sort of a a lot of times it will sort of it starts off with a very blurry image. It actually gives you like a progressive view as it sort of dials it into place. Um 
but these are also like i mean what we're giving it is is relatively straightforward but it'll it'll do a good job it'll do a pretty good job anyway let's see 95 almost done there we go so it looks like again like it's sort of there's a randomness to this that i can't pr you know predict but uh purple yellow green we definitely got it in the bottom one it looks like it skipped the purple on <laughs> on, on the rest of those so uh but i can tell it to give me four variants of number four i'm gonna re-roll to while we're at it and see if it gives us anything different um but yeah i've i mean i was trying to trim pink brown and you know orange just to see, i mean it, it it was at least interesting. <laughs> it was never bad. Um, but yeah, you can kind of already see where this is going. I, I, uh, you know, it, it's really just messing around with details basically, but it's keeping that color scheme. Um, and, and, but yeah, it does pretty good. My, this, this, it's like my editor won't like it. I'm skipping the purple. Yeah, this thing is against purple apparently. But, uh, but anyway, it, it will, uh, you can definitely add colors and it will, that will influence, uh, what it's doing. Um, oh, I, f I forgot that I actually made, I think I had the same thought you guys did here at some point, but there's purple, green, and yellow. Again, this looks very Mardi Gras to me as someone that's uh, very close to the home of Mardi Gras. Um, but it looks good. This one is also, I think I put, um, uh, I added Geiger's name, H.R. Geiger, who is the guy that designed uh, all the aliens in Alien. And so there's some there's some weird, like, round edges and stuff on this. It didn't do a great job looking like him, but it can. Um, I've seen some stuff that looks a lot like his work. Um, but e even stuff like this, again, that's this is a more detailed version of what we saw earlier. Um, when you get close... It falls apart. I mean, you know, there, there's no real windows on this building. It's just detail meant to look like buildings. You know, if you look at this in the background, obviously, like, it's a little rough around the edges. But I, I can totally see using this to get ideas for compositions, for color schemes, for whatever. Um, this one also, did it make the, give the cloud a, an antenna <laughs> and the buildings are actually in the sky uh, yeah so yeah every now and then it gets a little lost a little confused but uh and then it'll do things like you know give the guy a belt buckle like nobody asked for that but <laughs> a big trench coat has a belt buckle apparently but um but yeah this was yellow uh red yellow green this one was again and a big strong triadic scheme as they call it uh, this I was playing around with aspect ratios. You can again give it a like this is an ultra wide. I'm looking for some, uh, something for my monitor, and um, and again a few random people it threw in there, which is always interesting. But these big blocky color shapes, like it's it's such an interesting composition. And again, we've got that really simplified area right around the character. Um, but I'm impressed with the fact that like it knows, and this is really obvious if you're an artist, but like it knows to add the atmosphere. You know, it didn't just say, oh, these buildings are black, like, or dark. It, they're, they're dark, but they're lighter than the foreground. You know? Uh, this is again, just me riffing on, on uh, that idea. This one I put in on purpose, I, I, I added because I was so impressed with the use of red here. Like this is a really, to me, very creative use of the red because, and again, this, this ties in what we were talking about earlier, but let me get another color in here. So if you, and this is, I mean, this is just good art in general, but if we look at all of this, all of that, and actually I can even, we can mask that off. Uh, 
let me put a black layer under this. So, oh, that didn't, oh, I didn't put the black down there. There we go. So I want you to notice how much red there is in this and what we can see. Like what we can see here. The answer is next to none, <laughs> okay? There's very little bit of it splashing around uh, Bob Ross style, but there's no red anywhere else, except for <laughs> the one place that you want your audience to notice. And we even have these like lines pointing to the focal point. So like this thing is not randomly throwing colors around that you give it and go, hey, we'll see what happens. Like this is a decision I would make. You know, like if, if I've got a color scheme that's red, green, and yellow, I'm probably going to pick two of them as my main, you know, overall vibe. Um, this looks too good to be AI. If it is, I'm worried they may replace this. We're not ready yet. I, I, I will say the there are huge limitations with this software, okay? If you try to get it to look down on something, just... You know, like this, say we want this scene, but we want a crane shot from 20 feet up looking down as he looks to the sky and, and you know, it's not going to happen. Like, not not now. I, I have thrown every possible prompt that I could think of. Bird's eye view, high angle, low angle. Uh, it will, it does pretty decent with low angles because again, like, you know, you drop the horizon line. We're really just looking at planes. But when it has to look, when it has to do something that is like top down view, it, it just, I mean, I literally went through probably eight or 10 prompts just yesterday because I wanted to be able to tell you guys the, 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 an, an accurate answer on this, but I had like a person standing, you know, and the camera is looking down or, you know, from a high perspective or a bird's eye view, I gave it everything I could possibly give it. And it's just like drawing a standing man. Like it, it could not in the, at this angle, like it could not do that. Um, so that is a huge limitation right now, you know? Um, so this, you know, I had a, I called a friend of mine that, uh, there's an artist and he was, I told him about it and sent him some stuff and he was just mad. And I'm like, I want to show y'all why it's not stealing jobs yet. <laughs> like, I gave it like, uh, let me see. What did I put in? I'm trying to remember. Oh, I think I, I, I told it to do a, uh, like I told it, like we had a conversation. Um, what was that? I don't remember. I'm trying to think of the, I can search previous prompts. I may have deleted all of those because they were just so use useless. Uh, but yeah, like you, you tell it to give like a person doing something or like a specific pose. It It's horrible at it. Like it really is good at drawing people standing up. <laughs> and like, but if you tell it like, I, I had watched uh, Gladiator pretty recently and I'm like, was that a, was it, it was in a Coliseum. That's what it was. Somebody asked about crowd shots just then too. So like this, for like the first quarter second of your view, you're gonna be like, oh my God, it looks so realistic. But let's look a little closer. <laughs> like this woman doesn't have two arms, I don't think. She doesn't really have a face. This woman that looks like she might have multiple arms. And that crowd that looks like a crowd is is not a crowd. It just looks like a crowd. <laughs> okay. Uh it will still draw some artists who make metal band covers. It is a it is an image. It is a album cover. It's album cover perfection. I I, I like it really, really is. Um very impressionistic. Yeah, it's so impressionistic that you know you can't see it. But the thing that I was impressed with, this particular prompt, and I, I said, I, again, I'm trying to strip this thing up. You guys don't read into my mental state. But I said, two female dancers wearing cargo shorts fight to the death in the middle of a vast coliseum. 
grand scale, low angle, cinematic, dappled light. And, and, and that I think I'm more impressed. Oh, directed by Ridley Scott also. I don't know if that did anything, but it does have dappled light. It did a really good job of, you can imagine a couple of windows in this place open, throwing the sun through. Um, but you've got depth, you've got atmosphere. You know, this could be a steal from a Ridley Scott movie. It's like a thumbnail, but with good colors. The colors are perfect to me. The colors are so good. Again, like you have, uh, whoops, sorry. You have dark values, pretty much going all the way across here. You've got lighter values going all the way across the top. And where do the light and dark meet <laughs> on the characters? Like, it's good. Like, it's really good. And again, like, even this Coliseum, it's like, that's a great looking Coliseum. But when you look at it closely, you know, there's some, you know, this perspective doesn't really make sense. But it's pretty dang close, you know. Cargo short. Yeah, exactly. I really was trying to see what it would do. But I was interested to see more about what it would do. It did a couple of, like, one girl appearing to do a ballet move and then another looking like she might be swinging. Um, but it, it, it didn't, uh, I wanted to get a close up, a, a closer shot of this to see, uh, you know, again, like what it could do. And I'm going to show you guys what it gave me. And again, on first blush, it's very impressive. Literally for like, a second. <laughs> I mean, it's impressive anyway, but like I said, the detail's just not there. Um, I don't even know. This woman doesn't have a head. There's another woman here, it looks like, maybe. But I on this one, I added sense of action and movement. And it did do that. <laughs> it did. I, I did definitely feel like this is a, a rumble happening, but the details not there. But could we use this? If I was an artist and needed to use this, I absolutely could use this. Look at how, like, again, this is very basic stuff from an art standpoint, but I'm impressed the app knows this. Is where is the red? <laughs> There's no red anywhere in the background. Like it, it's 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 being scarce with the colors that are most important like which is uh that one didn't load all the way which is again kind of frying my brain anyway let's go let's see what else is in here oh uh, this is again like it does lonely people in the street it does very well <laughs> is there a way can i shift tab what is the oh there we go so i want to talk a little bit about this one this is another one that sort of fried my brain. I, I, I gave it a, a color scheme of white, blue, and teal. And it was like a man standing in a field in a trench coat or something. But I told it in the style of German Expressionism and David Fincher. <laughs> if you don't know David Fincher, uh, he's a very famous director. Uh, Fight Club. Uh, he's done a lot of movies. But I'll be damned if this doesn't look like German Expressionism and David Fincher. <laughs> That's the part that, like, I'm sort of, again, I'm kind of blown away. Um, and look at the uh, the top right one, just draw Hellboy and <laughs> cover done. A lot of these images, I've thought, I'm like, man, if we came in here and just did something like this, then, um, you know, we're there. Throw, throw some blue in here for this and the thing. And all you need is, um, do, I, do I have the, uh, where is it at? Are my effects working? So all you need is and you're there. <laughs> so um, I don't know. It 
you can again you can see the formula at work the bright clouds right behind him the bright horizon here sample it for an album <laughs> there you go anyway let's see where were we oh uh, this one um again like uh, just i was thinking my my wife's really into plants and greenhouses and stuff and so i asked it to do uh a uh i think i used the word ornate like an ornate greenhouse um I don't remember. I don't remember much else about it, honestly. I think I did want it to uh, spooky or something, just to see what it would do. And um, you know, yeah, it did a pretty good job. <laughs> but even in, in you know, even in uh, interior shots like this, look at the white of this is basically just an arrow, like right in the center of the image, you know. And oh, and you can have you can tell it. Uh, like screen space reflections or you know uh, whatever uh, you can throw it terms like ambient occlusion and a lot of times it'll do it um, but yeah this this was a very simple one there was not a whole lot to it so yeah we've got our oh this was an early one and again the results were so unlike what I had in mind like I did a character in one of my courses um uh, I think it's the grayscale painting course that was like half human, half Android. And so I, I gave it like half human, half Android thinking it would do this like hard split, you know, or something. And instead it gave me this like really subtle, like shift across the skin tones going from more robotic to completely human. And the lighting, the modeling on the face, like the rendering, is really, really strong. If an AI does it for you, can you consider it your art? That's a debate for somebody else to figure out. <laughs> I, I, I do think that there is a skill. How, how can I put this? It's one of those things that has a very low barrier to entry. Like you, you could give this, I mean, we're a few, you guys realize we're a few months away from like your mom asking how to use this software. Like, I honestly think that's what's going to happen. It's going to, it's going to be so everywhere <laughs> and so ubiquitous that we'll probably get sick of it at some point if you're not already. And some people already are. Um, but anyone literally anyone can come in and and type you know a, a dog does whatever and they're gonna and like people are able to get what's in their imaginations out people that aren't artistic necessarily are able to create like are they creating it we're the ones typing it they didn't paint it but they they did create it <laughs> if you're someone that's not a creator that's an incredibly powerful feeling and that's why I think, like I said, we're a few weeks, months away from from a saturation of this. I think, and I, if it wasn't, if it wasn't ten dollars a month, it would be even worse. Uh, the the ten dollar limit will, you know, uh, will keep a lot of people out. But uh, my aunties will fake the hell out of their vacations if they get their hands on this. They're like, here we are. We're in, we're in Cabo. But um, but it, on, on this, and I think I did tell it red eyes or something. But I thought it was fascinating that it put the more human eye on this side and the robot eye on the other side. Again, like to me, that's there's there's more logic there than just half android, half robot, you know. Uh, and again, look at where the red is. Like there there's no other red anywhere. Um, it's framed almost perfectly. I mean, it is framed perfectly. Rule of thirds. Um, this was one that I, that, that again, it just, I'm sort of blown away. All right. I cannot remember the prompts to do all this stuff. Um, I think I put this in here again, just to, again, like show the formula that it's using of like creating space on both sides. Uh, I don't remember what the prompt was on this one at all. 
probably something Mass Effect related. Again, it does pretty people really well. <laughs> I wonder if you can get it to create a prompt of an image of someone. Yes. Yes, you can. At least if there's enough of them on the internet. And I have a feeling that... I have a feeling that's going to end up getting restricted at some point. But if you're famous enough, uh, the app will know who you are. Uh, it also knows... Um, it also knows a lot of characters. It knows a lot of uh, real people, politicians, you know, all that stuff's there. I, I do have a feeling that... I don't know. I have a feeling that like proper names are, are, are going to be excluded or something at some point because I, it's going to, it's so messy. It's just so messy when we, we start getting into, yeah, like deep fakes and, you know, of course someone's going to say, Oh, let me show the president doing something insane, you know, um, probably, but yeah, it will, it will. Oh, that's the same one again. Why did I add this one? Oh, this one, I, I it it will sometimes be a little too on the nose, <laughs> I think, with its with its uh logic of, of it we literally just put the moon directly behind there, the sun directly behind this person. Um <clears throat> I I think this was I think I had Mass Effect as a code in this one. I, I don't remember the specifics on this one. I, I really have thrown a lot of stuff. This little there's a few in this little series I wanted to talk about. One, again, really really interesting color choices to me because the entire background is really warm except for the area right around the focal point uh, so they actually have created uh, a really strong focal point just in the background alone and again like you've got the sort of you know perfectly uh, lit halo right behind the character's head um Exactly what I was thinking. This could get ugly. Yeah, it probably already is. <laughs> like, I'm not. This software is not without its problems. And the and it's like I said to somebody on my Discord yesterday. Like, it's wonderful and terrible and fascinating and awful. Like, all at the same time. Um, but for this, I think there's a couple of these. Yeah. So I told it. I asked. I told it. We were in, we were we were chatting and uh, but I told it uh, uh, to combine Borderlands and Mass Effect promo art like into an advertisement, and I was literally trying things like effective ad and striking and you know eye catching and all this kind of stuff, and oh I think in the style of like Drew Struzan and like. I don't even remember. It was like a, I put four or five names in there just to like get it to do something interesting. And I, I did laugh. It took a few generations, but the first time it decided to put other people in the background, <laughs> I'm like, okay, now it's doing a little struzen. But, but again, like it's just a super, it's a great composition. Like, and like you, you can't just write off this this software as as uh, as not at least being a, a pretty incredible uh, whatever it is. This is another one from that series. It did a close up. Um, and it, it, you just can't get more intense, you know. So did you tell it to make you a sandwich? No, but since you asked, let's see. Make me a sandwich. We'll see what happens with that. Um, this is another from that series. And again, like... Ideas about color schemes that I've... You know. So here... Let's first look at the values, honestly. So the values, again, kind of follow the formula. We've got our bright area around the character. We've got our dark sides so from a value standpoint again this is like beating you over the head with the basics of what people find eye-catching <laughs> okay 
but then when you add color to the mix all of these values are still dark they're dark values but we've got this fantastic gradient of like orange and yellows into teals and greens and uh it doesn't do hands by the way <laughs> like that that's sort of i thought it was very funny that hands are very obviously difficult for anyone to draw including this robot so very often the hands sort of fade into weirdness or get very strange um but uh again just incredible incredible composition um this one there's there's a you can add uh i need to turn my ac down one second It is warm. It does. <laughs> it does feet better than life felt. You know what's funny? So, on Instagram a few weeks ago, I posted this funny video of like my wife and I playing basketball, and I like caught her off guard, and like blocked her shot. Like I was, you know, like it was the finals, and I had to stop it. It was just so random. It was a very funny video, or I thought it was, and um. Rob liked that video. I told my wife, like, Rob Liefeld liked our basketball video. <laughs> he didn't like the art, but he, I mean, he follows me, I guess. But I'm glad I, I impressed him with my uh, leaping ability. Um, oh, let me show you guys the uh, sandwich. There you, whoops. <laughs> There you go. I asked it to make me a sandwich. So there's your uh, sandwich complete with, uh, I don't know what kind of sandwich this is. It looks kind of like a sandwich <laughs> when you, at first at first glance. But I, I, I don't know what kind of sandwich that is. Anyway, where were we? I, I, li I like the face on this one. Again, like it was, it's hard to get decent faces out of this without a lot of time that I just... It's it, it I don't, you know I, I'm not one of those people that can sit there and do like a hundred you know variations for for giggles on the internet better than better in some way. Uh, oh, this one I put in because like how cool number one is this little spot of highlight on her head like I I was really impressed with that for some reason and also. I think on this one, I, I, I there was definitely some prompts of like eye catching, striking, uh, or uh, something like that, and it just like this is maximum, maximum contrast, okay? Because even in you know the background, we've got this super strong complementary you know blue and orange going on. These lights are like perfectly equidistant to her head. So they're just like echoing all of all of that stuff around her head, and um, what's in the background? I don't know. Y you tell me <laughs> what this background is. Uh, I don't know if she's in a club or or what's going on here. Uh, this is another again like combining Mass Effect and Borderlands, and it and they look like Mass Effect outfits for sure. And it looks more like Borderlands in the color scheme, all this red and yellow and all this stuff. But uh, it weirdly just, you know, there's a woman on top of a building. You know, I don't know what this woman, I don't know what where she came from or what she's doing over there. She seems to be enormous. Because <laughs> if you look at like, these, there's a car, right? She's behind that. So, you know, it, it, they're not all winners. This one I've added, of course, it uses the same formula it's been using with the light and all that. I won't repeat myself over and over. But what I told it, the, 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 the prompt on this one was a man experiencing vertigo in first person. And it just, I was more impressed with the tone just like the feeling of this. This man is not happy. Like, you know, this guy is not having a good day. Not because he's standing on the edge of a building, but just look at how muted the colors are. Like, everything is very desaturated. I didn't make any adjustments to this. 
And so it's it's not just thinking like Vertigo. Oh, well, that was a movie with this guy in it, and let's pull in something from that. Or that was... It's like it knows Vertigo is negative. <laughs> like it knows that's not a positive thing. And in the, in the choices it makes reflect that, you know? Um, and I, there was there were several... Um, I don't remember what this was. I just added it because I thought it was pretty. But... Um, you can, again, see the formula at, at work. Um, I've been watching a lot of Westworld. I really, really liked how this one turned out also. Um, it's very kind of painty, rough. Is that like Darth Maul? I, I never noticed that. Um, <laughs> let's, this just got way different. And like, again, who whose hat is this? Is there like a kid hiding in the weeds? Uh, and why are they so small? You know? But great color choices. Like we got these cool blues and teals and these warms. It, it, it does teal and orange very well, obviously. Why did I put this one in here? I mean, I think it was... It was the edge on this guy. I was impressed with, I'm impressed with this edge. I know that's a weird thing to be impressed with. Honestly, this app just proves how much color and composition can help illustration without detail. That, I mean, that's it. Yeah, that, that to me is what's incredibly impressive. Um, I, I, I do think, yeah, and th this is, I don't remember what this one was. I actually, I got a paint struggle on that one. Um, I think I put monochrome or, or monotone or something like that on this one. And, uh, but again, like you can see the framing. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's got a thing that it likes to do when you give it a single person. Um, I just, I like the sketchiness of this. Like, again, like this person looks don't really look like a person. I mean, it looks like a person, but I mean, is that a horse? Probably. But it, it, but there's really not, you can't really make out any details once you get close, but it's, I don't think that's what it's, you know, I don't think that's the best use of it anyway. Um, one of these days I'm going to, oh, we're kind of jumping all over the place here. Oh, this I just put aftermath. I literally gave it one term aftermath, and that's what it came up with. Looks like aftermath. Creepy stuff. It does creepy stuff very well. Um, I was so impressed with this. Again, like very sketchy, very kind of loose on in where it needs to be loose, and then really tight where it needs to be tight. Like from a detail level. It's making smart choices. Like you can literally see, like the detail of her hairline is insane. Like you can see individual strands. Her face is pretty detailed. But like you can see where it, it it's like it knows that these folds don't have to be perfect. And we're at the edge of the image. Um, it's those subtle things to me that I'm I'm most impressed with. Have we seen everything I have open? Oh, this is creepy as hell. Yeah, I, we had we had definitely had a creepy stage where I was making a bunch of weird stuff. Um, this one I gave I told it uh, a character that I that no one's ever seen before. I think that was literally the only thing that I put in. And I gotta say, like, I don't think everybody's ever seen. I mean, he's Nightcrawler ish. <laughs> um. A fluffy cat guarding the gates of Valhalla. There you go. <laughs> anyway, I, I, since we've... This is a creepy doctor's office. But any questions? I'll take a quick break and uh, get a drink of water here. Um, I think that's about all of the... I, I'm, I'm going out of order, but I think we've covered... Almost all of this stuff. Uh, 
oh I, I don't think I don't know if we talked about these or not but there there was I, I in this case I thought what if somebody hired me to draw you know a hooded figure that likes to hang out on gargoyles I don't know if you guys know anybody. I thought this was just hilarious. I don't know why. Uh, well, I got a reason. I got a few ideas, but I thought that was such a, <laughs> an interesting decision. Um, but uh, it pretty good. It turned out pretty good. Uh, again, like strong dark shapes, red in the foreground, blues in the background. This is another riff on that. Yeah, these, you can generate these, you can generate a hundred of these in 10 minutes, probably. I thought it was fascinating that it put him in front of this building. So it got kind of graphic-y. This was super impressive to me. I know I'm just beating a dead horse at this point, but the compositions are so good. <laughs> um, I was impressed with this one too. Again, all it needs is like little Tim sale action here <laughs> and then what is this the penguin there we go <laughs> are we ready to, are we ready no it needs a little more work than that but uh, I also put a few really realistic looking versions of this in here and it, it really goes crazy with the detail on this stuff. You can see in like, if you get really close, you know, maybe it's not perfect, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, this was just super strong compositions. Really, really pretty stuff. Um, <laughs> This was Wolverine sitting for a portrait. And I like how it couldn't figure out, is that hair or something else? <laughs> and he's got like, his eye is a little wonky. That might be a mouth there. I, I, I don't really know. But uh, yeah, we just, we didn't need to do, just do a little bit of that. And uh, it's not quite as bad. But I love the fact that it like it put him in that jacket. <laughs> uh, let's see, is that all of them? I think we may have been through all fifty images that I've put in here. Yeah, that seems to be everything. But um, but it, but it seems to me like, let's see, where did where did my toolbar go? How do you get that back? <laughs> there it is. So, nothing to be concerned about, right? Uh, questions, comments, concerns? I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the formula that I think it's using here for a second. I want to close. I guess there's a way to close all of this. Or I'll leave it open. Maybe there's somebody who will have a question. When it's depressing, we are screwed. Um, not yet. Not yet. But here's the thing. The CEO, I think it was the CEO of the company, said something, and it really made me... It, it was very eye-opening because I think it's true after seeing this. You know, we're only a few steps away now. You know, we're they're actually, believe it or not, they are limited by computer power. Like, as powerful as our computers are and how many you can go and rent from Amazon or whatever, um, they're limited by how much computer power that they have. And the computer is going to keep getting faster. 
And so we're probably, I was, I mean, I don't think we're more than, it could be months on the low end. I think we're on, uh, at minimum, a few years away from this thing starting to do things like short clips. Because it obviously understands depth and, and a lot of stuff. So you'll start getting, oh, well, now you can make three second clips with it. And then it's going to be, well, now you can do 10 minute, you know, scenes with it. Uh, but he said something that just, again, kind of fried my brain is that we're going to get to a point to where you can say, okay, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing. It's not what he said, but let's say that you're a game designer and at some point you're going to have an AI where you can say, you know what? I want to play a Mortal Kombat style game uh, fighting uh, Batman against the Powerpuff Girls. And we're and it's going to be able to do it. So, like, we're already sort of, in my opinion, on, like, a freight train with no brakes toward automating ourselves into extinction, uh, basically. And uh, so find John Connor quick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but... Yeah, it's this stuff is already scary, and I think it's only going to get scarier. Um, would it be a good idea for a beginner to use this app to try to understand color or get ideas for color? Would that teach me the wrong things? I don't think it would teach you anything wrong. I mean, if you're using it as as a reference tool to learn, like I'm using it as a reference tool to learn about color, to answer your question. <laughs> I mean, I'm like... Uh, let, let, let's play with this for a second. Like with, if I have, um, somebody give me a prompt, something relatively simple. I just want to play with the colors here. Um, but I, I, I do think, how can I put this? Let me get it. Let me just get a new canvas here for a second. And then you guys think of something that you want to see. And we're gonna try a bunch of color schemes. But I, 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 I so let's say this is uh, where is my thingamajiggy rectangle? All right, I'm gonna say this is our canvas. And we got a line, and we got a thing over here, and a thing over here. Bruce Tim Cthulhu. It may not teach you the wrong things. I don't think it will teach you all the right things. No, and I, I think to answer, yeah, to be more specific on your question about um, color, like I don't recommend learning color from a machine. No, I don't. Like I, I'm able to recognize all of this stuff because I've studied the basics and fundamentals of color extensively, you know? So you're not going to know what you're looking at or for if you don't have, you know, something to base that off of. Um, an evil sorcerer in a cemetery. We've done so much evil stuff today. <laughs> All right, well let's let's try that. We'll we'll do a couple of these and let it run. It takes a few minutes. Um, so our evil sorcerer in a cemetery. What colors do we want to see in that? But um. I want you, this is how I, and this is an oversimplification, obviously, but I want to tell you how I think this software is working. So let's say that we have a thing that we're, and this thing could be anything. It, it could be the, 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 the focus of your painting. It could be a color. It could be a shape. It could be whatever. But just for the sake of simplicity, let's say this is the thing that you want to do, okay? And then you have the stuff around the thing. <laughs> this is very complex, can you tell? So, if I put a lot of stuff around the thing in, in just a very simple pattern, the thing is going to stand out because all of the stuff around it is different. Are you with me so far? <laughs> and the same thing works, you know, in reverse. 
obviously if this was a circle and these were all triangles, it doesn't really matter what the thing is. As long as the thing is different from what's around it, it's going to grab your attention, okay? So if we were to do the opposite of this, so let's say that I've got lots of things and only one of the stuff around the thing. Oh, I, I mixed that up, didn't I? There we go. This is very fast. But now the stuff became the thing. <laughs> now this is the, the thing and it's surrounded by triangles that are all different. So this could be light. This could all be dark. You know, this could be saturated. This could all be unsaturated. You know, if you think of it as a, as a spectrum, and this is, this is a little bit of a review if you've heard me talk about this before, but you can think of this as like the closer that the stuff around the thing is to the thing. <laughs> Does this make sense? The, the 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 more they're going to blend so so you can kind of imagine like somewhere in the middle of this if this was like a spectrum from a triangle to a circle that there would be like kind of a fat triangle like here and maybe that's a little bit less and then this is even a little bit more round and then we've got the circle so you can imagine almost anything sort of morphing from one side to the other well anywhere that the software wants you to look it's increasing the distance on this scale. So it's like, let's put the triangle right next to all these circles. And that's really gonna make that stand out. But if everything around the triangle is only, you know, slightly, uh, a slightly different shape, like this triangle has like some little bit of a round edge to it, you can kind of see that, honestly, these lines are a little bit thicker and so it's standing out anyway. But you can see that that would be harder to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish as far as to get that item to come forward the, the closer you get to this end of the spectrum. That's what it's doing everywhere in every way. Like with edges, with shapes, with color. Uh, obviously, like all of this stuff makes up the composition. But like... Let me find one of these. Um, you know, the water in the background looks, is nothing at all like what's in the foreground. That difference is what it is basically just weaponizing. You know, it's like in this image, the entire image is red except for the character being green. You know, so we're establishing a pattern of red and then breaking it with the green. We're also breaking it with the shape, obviously, like the rest of this is all flowy and looks like, I don't know what this looks like, uh, Kool-Aid. Family friendly YouTube. Um, and this has got hard edges on it. So even like, you know, even, I mean, any of this stuff, that's kind of just how art works. I mean, I don't think there's nothing groundbreaking here, but um, thank you, this makes so much sense. <laughs> And let's, let me put uh, pink, fuchsia, green. I can actually see that working pretty well. Um, and then we'll also try happy sorcerer at a McDonald's playground. And what colors do we want for that? Did anybody else give it any other colors? I'm just going to, uh, well, it won't look like McDonald's. Let's just see what happens if we... If I leave that, I'm just curious to see what it does. Red Moon Ice World sounds interesting also. I'm going to let all that run. Uh, the pictures are impressive, but can they originate art or simply produce deviations of existing art? No, these are, this is absolutely new, never-before-seen art. I mean, it's, it, it, it's definitely you know, picking up on a lot of different art to make it. And you might see, like, I noticed when I was doing, um, like, the Borderlands Mass Effect mashups, 
that I'm like, oh, that kind of looks like uh, an ad I remember seeing for Mass Effect, you know? So, I mean, it definitely, like, is heavily influenced, but it's also... If, you had, if you've seen what all it's doing, you, you would... Well, let me just pull this in real quick uh, and show you. Um, there are things here that have never been seen before. That That's what's impressive to me. Um, you know, I, I made a... Uh, what? Let me pull this in here. Hold on. What was it that I made that was... I can't remember what it was. I'll come to me in a second. Oh, it was something to do with your question about is the art deviating. Uh, dang, just that quick. I forget what I was going to look up. <laughs> but like, if you want a, a, you know, a shoe made out of Swiss cheese, like it'll just give it to you, you know? Um, But anyway, this is like what's hot at the moment, but I'm going to go to the top for the week. And what's interesting to me about pieces like this is that it understands what a gate is. And it knew to like, you know, at least give us an impression that we're looking into either a, a blue haze through to the other side or we're looking at somewhere else or whatever. Those kind of things are fascinating. Um, I don't think we're going to see any nudity on here, so I'm just going to flip through some of these. But um, just just to show, like, there's a things like this, a hydron antimatter vacuum reactor. Like, I don't think this exists, <laughs> at least nothing like this. You know, uh, plenty of cyberpunk girls. Um, but all of this stuff, I mean, here's a carved diorama made out of marble. Like what I've shown you, obviously, is what I've been looking for and pretty specific. But it has a very wide range of capabilities. I mean, this is very photorealistic to me. I mean... Again, if you get close, it might fall apart, but so yes, it all of this stuff that it's doing is um really, really unique most of the time. I mean, if you give it a unique prompt, it will give you a unique uh piece of art. And we and we don't have to debate what art is today. All right, so the evil sorcerer in pink and green is right here. You asked for it. <laughs> and then we have the Happy Sorcerer McDonald's Playground. This one, uh, I, I don't know. It seems a little confused by this one. I'm going to re-roll this one and just see uh, what happens. And then the red moon ice planet, to me, looks exactly like what I saw in my head. So, you know, if you're... The thing that's impressive and, again, kind of terrifying is that... What is the... Uh, hold on one second. Let's see. Paperback, book, image, ratio. What is that? 1.6 to 1. So if I put in, let's see, uh, imagine red moon ice world AR 1.6 to 1. Can we put points in there? No, we can't. What is that close to? Let me just say, we'll say 8 by 10. I don't know. It's not a good aspect ratio, but it'll kind of give you the idea. 
this one is a little bit we're getting there with your <laughs> like it's trying to make the sorcerer part of the playground equipment i think <laughs> so maybe your job is safe jason i'm not sure which is more evil yeah me neither uh Let's, yeah, for Lobo in the style of Frank Fazet, Frazetta. I'm going to guess this is going to give you... I don't think it's going to give you very much here, but let's see. It's probably going to be Lobo standing there because it's really good at drawing people standing there, and that's about it. If, if you try to put, like, a man jumping over a box i'm going to show you all what turns up I, i'm guessing it's not going to look like a man jumping over a box uh they're going to have to train this thing to respect trademark and copyright no nah, they're not <laughs> they're just not i mean at i mean i i it'd be nice it'd be real nice i just i i don't think that genie is going back in the bottle But yeah, it's short. Let me say this: short of legislation, like, yeah, I, it's not going anywhere. And and we know, especially here, how up to date our politicians are on technology. So we'll probably get laws about this in twenty years, if it goes like it has for the rest of us. But uh, anyway, any other uh, any other questions or? Uh, Anything else you guys want to discuss? How long have we been doing this? An hour and a half? Sorry, I'm still... This thing is slow today. I, I, I think uh, the more people sign up, the more... Uh, yeah, the, slow, the slower it seems to be getting. It's it's going the first day I used it it was really fast and then after that it's gotten progressively worse every day. So like it's a victim of its own uh success. But like if I'm uh if I'm a writer and I'm like hey I'm thinking I want a red moon on an ice planet. It's like I can send all of these to an artist and be like you know I like the one in the top right build something off of that you know but some of these i mean the detail in the ice is impressive <laughs> this is some far out stuff it's 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 just it's mind-blowing for me like I, I i just the fact that we can say something like uh, let me show you our frazetta lobo it is recognizable, I would say, as Lobo, at least in that bottom one. But, um, so actually, and, and the top one, it's like, you know, again, the hands are weird. This one really doesn't make any sense at all. I don't know who that is. <laughs> but we can, we can like, I'm going to take that fourth one and like run a variation on that one and see what happens. And we'll we'll upscale it too and see what happens. I think it'd be a useful support tool and I generator for sure. Idea generator for sure. That's that's how I plan on using it. I mean, I don't um, especially for like I, like I'm working on a uh, I, I actually I might I'm I'm gonna might take a break and just play around with this with y'all. Um, I want I, I'm working on a new book uh, and I've got a little bit of time for a little bit of time for once and uh i want to try uh fresco watercolors on it and see how it goes i just got my flats back in and i haven't tried fresco with flats yet and so i kind of want to see how clunky that is or not clunky that is and go from there so just again to show you your your jobs are are, are not all gone yet <laughs> <laughs> this is a man jumping over a box. I don't see that happening here or here. 
So the box is in the background here, and he seems to be throwing the box there. Like, it is absolutely horrific with poses. Any, like, trying to get it to do a specific pose is extremely difficult. And so, does that stay that way? Probably not, but right now it's, yeah. Looks like a New Yorker illustration. That's something I haven't thought about. Oh, here, here's the upscaled Lobo Frazetta. And again, like it's, you know, it's in the ballpark. I'm going to, I'm going to keep messing with that one. Let's see what we get. I can see this is great for set pieces or environments. Yeah, there's already, I've already seen a few comics people have tried to, to make with it. And, uh, Obviously, like, it's hard to get it to repeat a face, you know? And so, like, you have to get creative. And there's already software out there to, like, fix the faces. I mean, that stuff exists already. Um, I, I've had... And it's also just fun. Like, I, I, like, <laughs> like I know we, we, you know, we, we spend $15 a month on Netflix, um for for entertainment and there there's definitely at least for for me you know that if you want to have like um you know uh, uh what did i look for the other day that was like a, a marble statue of a blender or something like you know oh i didn't i did not spell that right <laughs> i don't know what it's about to give me what's that brand name of blender that's so well known somebody knows what i'm talking about those expensive blenders is it kitchen aid i'm gonna put that in here marble statue of a kitchen aid blender i don't know if that's the one i'm thinking about but if I don't put that in there, it's going to assume I want like a marble statue of the 3D software, which that, that, that I'm actually more curious to see, uh, a marble, uh, statue of the 3D app blender that probably, I don't think this will work, but I'm, I'm just curious to see what's going to come out of it. Um, I wonder what it would do for an ink blot test. I saw a statue. How do you spell Rorschach? Uh, let me see. Hold on. I saw a statue of a Rorschach test built with this. I got to make sure I spell Rorschach right. Uh, but again, that's a perfect example to me of like, something that would be almost impossible to create without a tremendous amount of work in the real world. <laughs> uh, but it's not that hard for this software. There's a couple of these. I mean, you can see the wood grain. You can see where the light is in the room. Like, you got that top-down studio lighting. Um, let me see where... Yeah, this Lobo thing is not going very well. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's... It's definitely like being able to ask for the style of other artists. And it's obviously like... It's not able to do it exactly, but I've seen some really fascinating results where they're like, where you're mixing, you know, six different names. Um, let's see, did it finish the, <laughs> yeah, the marble statue of a blender needs some work. Uh, again, but it's very rare that the first thing you put in here is going to work. Like it, a lot of this stuff, you, you kind of have to uh, massage quite a bit. And like 
run multiple variants to get it to give you what you want. Um, everyone will start asking for WLOP. Yeah, I've seen a few of those already. They don't really look like his work <laughs> or her work. I don't actually know. Uh, Oh yeah, give me the blender names. Yeah, it's KitchenAid's the one I was thinking about. <laughs> yeah, anybody that's just joined this stream is like, what? <laughs> oh, click the like button, everybody. Let me do a YouTuber thing. All right, all of our, yeah, all the Lobos are, they're just getting, they're actually getting worse, so. Yeah, don't no no smashing buttons. Just click them. So what else you guys need to see before we wrap this up? I'm about to uh I guess this needs to be a different stream probably. Yeah, I need to get some lunch anyway. So what I'll probably do, uh there's not any other questions is uh, I'm going to break for lunch personally. And then uh, I'm going to come back and do, uh, we'll do some stuff in Fresco. I'm going to try to see, can I do a page of a book in Fresco without losing my mind? <laughs> I, I, I really, I feel like I'm going to really miss the keyboard. Uh, the other thing I, I wanted, actually while I'm thinking about it, um, I kept running variations on uh, let's see where did that go I've, I've done so many things I I tried to get it to uh, the results on this are just insane insanely weird not good I asked it uh, to do a X-Men's mystique transforming into spider-man and uh, <laughs> I I don't I, this is incredibly disturbing to me. Uh, funny stuff, and some that were like almost cool. <laughs> Nightmare fuel exactly. Who who knew that Spider Man with red hair would be so terrifying? <laughs> uh, but I've uh, I'm actually I've I've been believe it or not and and I don't know this is gonna sound this is gonna sound probably uh, this might be delusions of of grandeur here, but um, I you guys know that anybody that follows this channel for very long. Uh, knows that uh, I've had some very an, an interesting experience in my life with my back and the my, my tension problems and uh, uh, all, all all sorts of interesting things that that apparently uh, doctors just don't have a clue about. Why can't I search for? Hold on one second. I think the website might be. Websites doing weird stuff. I can't search for anything at the moment. But I was trying to get it to, uh, there we go, to combine um, things like anatomy drawings of like muscle fascia with some of like the Eastern medicine concepts um, of, uh, you know, acupuncture points, meridians, chakras, all this kind of stuff that I, uh, I'm just now starting to learn a little bit about. And it's really fascinating 
what it's what it's spitting out um trying to get it to uh combine these ideas but what's weird is like my biggest problem is right at my solar plexus is extremely extremely tight and <laughs> when i started seeing the results of all of these things like creating all of this tension that pulls like right into this area and even color coded the chakras there's like seven chakras and I, I do know that but it does a it does a really good job of sort of very weird conceptual ideas and, and blending them together um which I think is fascinating, and I, I but I, I think some of the stuff, the images I've that I say I've made, or this thing is made, whatever. Some of this stuff I put a ton of time into, uh, but I guess I can't can't take all the credit for it. But for example, this I was trying to get it to isolate a, a, an image of of muscle fascia because mine's all twisted up. Oh, this is not even the detailed one. Hold on. This is the detail one. And this might be the first view of muscle fascia I've ever seen that seems to be accurate. That doesn't include skin, doesn't include bone, doesn't include muscle. Like it's strictly the muscle fascia. And like it actually is clarified for me like some of the angles that are pulling on my rib cage that I wasn't really aware of if that makes sense um because once you see like how especially once you add you start adding like uh some of the some of the like like, like i said the eastern medicine concepts and and some of those diagrams i'm trying to find there's a specific image i'm trying to find uh i've made so many of these of these things just riffing on ideas um but yeah right now the website's being very slow oh this one so once i figured out what a shocker was and i started looking up that if you have one that is blocked or rotated or whatever i i asked i think i put in something like the effect of the throat and solar plexus chakra uh counter rotated against each other with the effect in yellow i think is what i put it something like that and i know this looks like a very weird image but i gotta tell y'all like all of this is what i've been feeling for the last 18 months <laughs> this like it doesn't follow a specific muscle like doctors are so caught up on like specific muscles and parts and they're not looking at the whole thing and yeah that's pretty much how i feel too <laughs> but uh i don't think any images like this have ever been created i'll be honest i don't think i don't think that uh i've never seen it before i've never seen the actual tension lines from the body in any of the diagrams if you start looking into this stuff and uh i don't know i'm kind of again blown away and impressed and all that stuff but uh ai should take doctor's jobs not artists that's probably coming too they're, they're already doing studies where the some computers are better at locating like tumors and things than people because they're more sensitive uh it's ten dollars a month uh for the base plan uh and then it's 30 for basically like unlimited slow images like there's there's two modes there's a fast and slow fast is very fast but it it you can eat up i know you can eat up like a month's worth of uh of what they give you in a few days if you use it heavily like i did so i think you get 25 images for free you know something like that but uh i don't know this is these are weird concepts that not everybody understands and, and, and i realize that but uh it is it is insane what this thing is capable of and i i think we're 
the fact that we're making pretty art with it, you know, we're just scratching the surface, I think, because the computer or whatever, the, the mind of this thing is seeing things that I don't think people are seeing. I really believe that um, on some of this stuff, not all of it, but on things that it knows well or things that it can pull good sources from, like, you know, anatomy drawings or diagrams and that kind of stuff. It's it's kind of nuts. It's kind of nuts. There was one other thing, and then I'm going to wrap this up. Any other questions? That's highly thought-provoking. Yeah, yeah, it is. Believe me, it is. Like, there are some of these where I'm like, these are the lines that I'm feeling the tension on, like, in my own body. <laughs> And, uh, there's so, uh, there's a lot of garbage examples of what I was trying to do in here. I'm trying to dig through all of this stuff. Mm -mm -mm. We're getting there. Oh, this was it, I think. Yeah. This, again, it color-coded each the effect of each chakra different. This is the back, but like that point right in the center is in for me is like, I feel like everything in my body is being pulled by that point right there. And so when I saw this, when I finally gave it a posterior view and I'm like, well, it's good to know that, uh, you know, at least I, I, it seems to be accurate, but you can really see in something like this, how you can have a knee that's twisted that's affecting your neck or your shoulder. Like our bodies are so more, much more tightly connected. Uh, and people that do yoga know this, you know, the people that like high level yoga practitioners and uh, uh, the people that really study this stuff. I am dabbling at a Fisher Price level of understanding of all of this stuff. Um, but it actually was generating more of how the tension actually flows around the body, which is completely different from what the anatomy looks like. You know, the underlying muscles are are almost, it's not that they're not important, but like we, we get too caught up in the shape of individual little muscle and it's like, oh, my rib's hurting. Well, it's like, is your rib hurting because your rib's hurting or is your rib hurting because like in my case, where's my uh, pencil? In my case, I'm right-handed, but all of this is sort of over-twisted around here because I'm an artist and all of this stuff gets, you do the same motion for 40 years, you start to build pathways. Well, you think this just stops here? It's like, no, this wraps around and comes around this way, you know, and flows all the way down into your, you know, into your legs. But you can actually see the back side of the pelvis and then what's on the front here, which I also thought was fascinating. But it's like, oh, that's my why my ribs hurting. I've got to, you know, lessen this thing up here to pull the tension. You know, all this stuff is is fascinating to me. And I know it's not for everybody. And some of these things look a little weird. But anyway, any other questions? I don't see a whole lot of questions in here. Looks last call. And uh, I, I'll, I'll probably, uh, I will be back this afternoon because I, I do want to, um, I do want to see what Fresco does with watercolor. Thanks, man. No problem. No problem. Uh, I want to see what's on the community feed today. Have a good lunch. I'll probably miss you later today, but let's do it again. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I love the fact that it does like Da Vinci style drawings <laughs> of a robotic dinosaur. There you go. A very thirsty man wrote this. <laughs> wrote this uh <laughs> wrote this prompt yeah i don't see any other questions but uh thank you all for coming thanks for watching subscribe like
blah 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 all that stuff uh new video out soon i think what what day is it early either this weekend or early next week a new video on the channel thanks all for coming we'll see y'all next time